finance with Ford Motor Credit. You'll be amazed over 800 new Fords on the ground in Baxley. You'll also be amazed at the Woody Bolton Ford price. Ford Super Duty's on sale too. Select diesel models. Farm Bureau members get up to 3500 in factory savings. A 4500 Woody discount for a total of $8,000 in savings. Get zero for 60 month financing on 19 Edge. Escape and explore. Zero for 72 on Expedition. Ford owns work and we make it easy to own Ford. Better get to Baxley and Woody Folsom Ford, where the deals are. Be amazed at the Woody Folsom Ford price. Restrictions apply. See dealer for details. Celebrating 50 years as the sports leader in Southeast Georgia. W-I-F-O-F-M. Chesapeake. Yes, Fox News. I'm Chris Foster. The House is expected to vote tomorrow on a resolution formalizing the impeachment process. Yesterday's witness, Colonel Alexander Vindman, told lawmakers he reported President Trump's request to Ukraine's president to investigate Joe Biden to superiors. Top Oversight Committee Republican Jim Jordan complains Democratic Chairman Adam Schiff cut off questions about who else Vindman spoke with. If he's so concerned about the rights of the Congress, the rights of the legislative branch, let us get our questions asked and answered. Democrats say the line of questioning is intended to figure out the identity of the intelligence Intelligence community whistleblower whose complaint set off the impeachment inquiry. Fox's Jared Halpern in Long Beach, California. A shooting overnight at a Halloween party leaves at least three people dead and nine injured. The shooting took place outdoors with multiple shell casings found in an alley behind the home. Fox's Marion Rafferty, no word if there have been any arrests. America's listening to Fox News. It's the latest from Fox News Podcasts, The Campaign with Brett Baer. With updates from reporters on the trail and in-studio experts, Brett keeps you informed on the 2020 race. Go to foxnewspodcast.com and download The Campaign with Brett Baer now. I'm Maria Bartiromo from Fox Business. My parents lived the American dream. My father cooked in his restaurant. I was the coat check girl. Today, I'm still working the hardest I've ever worked, giving my viewers every tool I can to help them succeed. I'm Stuart Varney from Fox Business. My first investment, traveling the world for about five years and ending up right here in America. Damn good investment, actually. Fox Business. Invested in you. The Fox News Rundown is a weekday morning podcast that dives deep into the major and controversial stories of the day. Hosted by the anchors of Fox News Radio. Subscribe now to hear a perspective of news you won't find anywhere else. Listen now by going to foxnewspodcasts.com. Since 1946, Murphy's Builder Supply has been serving the folks of Jessup, Wayne, and surrounding counties with quality products and knowledgeable service. Matter of fact, they feel they sell service first to make sure you get exactly what you need for your home improvement projects. And with each employee at Murphy's being there for 10 years or more, you know you're talking with someone with the experience to help you with building supplies, tools, paint, and all the things you need from a full-service hardware store. The best choice in home improvement is Murphy's Builder Supply, 156 Northeast Broad Street, Jessup. For the best car wash at the best price, then go to the new Nips Car Wash, located at 459 Highway 301 South, down from McDonald's in Jessup. Nips Car Wash features state-of-the-art IQ automatic car wash system. Every car or truck that enters the automatic IQ wash system is scanned to capture its unique vehicle profile to give you a great car wash every time. Nips Car Wash also features two self-service bays where you can choose from a variety of accessories such as foam brush, tire brush, bug off, wax, clear coat, and spot-free rinse with powerful blowers located in each bay to top off your car wash experience at an affordable price. For the best quality car wash around, go to the new Nips Car Wash located down from McDonald's on the left on Highway 301 South in Jessup. That's Nips Car Wash with a state-of-the-art IQ automatic wash system on Highway 301 South down from McDonald's in Jessup. At 801, World Team is Butch and Bob Show on WIFOFM brought to you this morning by Murphy Builder Supply and Nips Car Wash. Good morning, Bob. Good morning, John. How are you doing today? We're here. Dry. Game seven. Nationals, yes. Houston. Who you got? Uh, I'm going to pull for Houston. Can't can't add that insult to injury, but if the Nationals win, uh, what was the season for? We wasted 97 good wins. If the Nationals win, they said history, though. No home teams won a game yet. That's kind of unusual. Yeah. But, and how many years has it been going on? Well over 100, way, yeah, since, way, the, since the late 1800s, early 1900s, the first one. Or one time it was, it was nine games at one time yeah. early on. 
Uh, I can't wait. It should be fun. All right. <laughs> We've got several guests in the studios with us today. First, we're talking hospice. We've got okay. Kayla Popple and Mr. Stanley Totting with hospice. Good of, morning. And Good they've morning. got an event coming up they want to talk about. So who wants to go first? Well, Stanley, he's pointing to you, Stanley. Good morning. Yes, yes. Thank you. Uh, we're going to be talking today about our annual uh, memorial service. And uh, this is uh, a very beautiful setting. We do it uh, once a year. And uh, it's going to be this Saturday at 2 o'clock. Uh, the service is held at the uh, Jessup Presbyterian Church. And uh, it's just a beautiful, beautiful setting, uh, Bob, that allows our people that uh, have lost a loved one over this past year to come and uh, and give memory to, to the one that they've loved and, and uh, missed so very dearly. And we what we do is we, uh, during the service, we'll uh, have some of our uh, staff that will share some uh, readings and uh, give their thoughts. The biggest part of the program is uh, lighting a candle. Uh, and that candle uh, has uh, the name of the person who passed away on it. And uh, the family, they're invited to come and stand and, and uh, light the candle. And then after the service is complete, they're allowed to take that candle home with them. It makes a pretty neat uh, item to put on a holiday table of some kind or to remember their loved one through the through the holiday season so uh, but anyway it's uh, this coming saturday at, at two o'clock at the jessup presbyterian church so we hope that people will uh, uh go ahead and and uh make some preparations to be there we we would love to to see anyone who'd like to come be there that that was uh, lost a loved one under our care this past year okay and caleb what's your role in this uh, You're just here for support. Caleb, Caleb's I, big support. I don't know what we do without Caleb. I can I, tell you that right now. I do what Mr. Stanley tells me. No, no. Yeah, yeah, I can tell you what. Smart he, man. Yeah. Yeah. Caleb, That's how you do it. Caleb is doing a great job, and we, we're so thankful to have him with us. And uh, But he, he, he takes a, a lot upon himself and gets a lot of work done behind the scenes, so we're thankful for him. But I, I'll just say a few more things about the program and why I think it's so important that we do it. Uh, first off, it is seasonable. Uh, it, it comes this time of the year, uh, right before Thanksgiving and before Christmas. And, you know, it's a tough time of the year for people who have lost someone. And, uh, you know, they're, they're not here like they've been in the past. And so this gives people that opportunity to come and allow their uh, – Express their grief and the sorrow over over somebody that's not going to be with them through the through the holiday season. And it's so important that we uh, that we learn how to mourn as we uh, go through the loss of someone that we've loved. Uh, we all will grieve, um, but not everybody will mourn. In other words, express their loss the way they should. And I think a setting like this gives that uh, people that opportunity to come and be in a, a comfortable setting where they're around others who, you know, are there for the for the same reason. And so, in a sense, it's communal. And, and that you don't just come for yourself, you come for everybody else. And while you're there, a lot of support is uh, is found. So uh, that's that's one of the, you know to me one of the greater reasons we do it. Um, and then for some, uh, they just didn't have a chance to have a funeral, maybe, or have a memorial service when they did lose their loved one. And so uh, for some, this is like that, and it d- does give them opportunity to come and have that moment of. Uh, of memory and uh, thinking of, of that one that they've lost. Uh, and then uh, I, I love this idea of having candles uh, and lighting the candles. If, if you've ever been, you know the beauty of that occasion. Uh, and we have candles uh, lit for all of the ones who have passed away. And uh, when all those candles are lit, it just reminds you that, that life continues. Uh, you know, that, that person might not be here in the physical anymore, uh, but their memories are still here, and so that's uh, that's a beautiful, beautiful scene, and uh, I think it's it's great for those who will come and be a part of it. Any cost for the candle at all, or how does that work? No, there's absolutely. This is one of those uh, services that we provide, and uh, uh, at of course no charge to anybody in our community. It's a, it's a, it's a one of those. Um, Opportunities that we feel so important, and so it's provided at no charge. And uh, uh, for anybody that comes, as a matter of fact, the candles are given away at the end of the service. Also, this year we we're having we're given out an ornament uh, uh, that our director Tony Ray has uh, making available. And I, I just 
I'm so thankful for all of our staff that contribute and do what they do and make this a very special setting for those who come. Again, this Saturday, right? Yes. This Saturday. Time again? 2 o'clock. 2 o'clock. And location? Just Presbyterian Church. And everyone's invited. Those who have lost a loved one under our care under this past year. Yeah. And uh, it, it's a memorial service for, for those who have passed away, uh, who's had a loved one pass away while they were under our care this past year. Mm-hmm. Yes. It's a beautiful service. I was blessed to be part of it last year and looking forward to it this year. And it's just a, it's a, it's a wonderful time to reflect on those ones that we've lost and, and, uh, and yeah, it, it's, um, it's one of those occasions where, um, uh, people think, you know, I, I don't want to go to this because all we're going to do is, you know, just sit and cry and maybe, you know, be sad, but actually, uh, that's healing, Bob. Uh-huh. And, uh, I think when a person can find a way to do that, uh, they're finding a way to express all that stuff that's got down deep within them because they've lost someone that they've loved very dearly. And so then when they come and they leave that service, it almost, uh, every year we'll hear people say, wow, I didn't know that this would be as helpful of a service as it is. And so, uh, it, it's helpful, but it is healthy in the sense that it does give people to mourn the way that they, they should be able to mourn. Sounds good. Again, Stanley Todd, Caleb Poplin here, big event this Saturday with hospice, 2 o'clock, everyone's invited. Yes, and uh, if uh, if a family um, has a friend or someone else that uh, they would like to bring with them, uh, they're welcome to invite and have them come and, and be with them, support them. You're also a city council member. Got in unscathed, as most city council members did, only one contested race. Do you feel good about that? Well, oh, absolutely. I, listen, uh, I, I'm very humbled to have the opportunity to, to serve our, I, I think, this one of the greatest cities in America. I'm so proud to, to live in, in Jessup, Georgia, and Wayne County. And to be able to serve our people is phenomenal. Uh, and especially to now have the opportunity to uh, go back into another term unopposed. I, I just uh, I can't say thank you enough to uh, my district in particular in our community for allowing this to happen. But that being said, uh, election day is coming. And uh, I've noticed that we have had very, very few people that have done early voting. And although uh, there's only one in, on the commission that, that has any opposition, uh, I think that um, that voting process is still very, very important. And, uh, it, you know, you go up there and you that's how you express uh your citizenship that's how you express that you're a part of this city and a part of this county you go up there and you do whatever you do in that ballot box to express your thought and so uh, i appreciate people going up there and doing that for me even though i'm unopposed it, it does give me confidence of knowing that people appreciate what's what's happening so yeah you ready to talk some politics can we talk some politics? Uh, well, you know, we came here to talk about memorials. So. <laughs> but uh, but uh, well, we that. let me just say. I just want to get your thoughts on, you know, that we've been covering this uh, service agreement that this county and city just opened script. You know, I don't I don't think you made the last one on Friday, but right. what, what, where you stand on? You know, why is it taking so long and what seems to be the issue? Well, why can't we can't all come together and yeah. make an agreement? And, you Where's know, all this animosity coming from? Join the city question, county. Bob, I think what we. I mean, you're on the city council. I mean, sure, you, sure. you see what's going on. You know, you haven't met with the county, and God knows when. Well, why, why can't we sit down at the table and into you know, the animal control seem like a easy issue to resolve if they had a meeting, but they couldn't get a meeting between the two bodies. Right. And, and now, November 11th, the city's mm-hmm. bailing out of the contract. So, right. just want to get your thoughts on that. What we have to do is remember, first of all, we're all Wayne Countyans. Uh, we might live in Jessup, we might live in Scriven or Odom or, uh, or Mount Pleasant or Garden, you know, but we're, to begin with, we're all Wayne Countyans. We have to remember that. And then uh, we're all here in for the greater good of who we are. Uh, and so when we come to the table of, of decision, uh, we have to remember we're, we're not against each other, we're for each other. And if we can sort of keep that in in our uh, forefront, well, then trying to work through these issues that sometimes uh, we see differently, uh, I think they're easier resolved. But there are issues that uh, are important, and uh, 
and some may be uh, the city may see a different way than the way some in the uh, county might uh, interpret it. But I think that the bottom line is there's an answer. And instead of us, um, you know, being so uh, distracted by what we can get and what the other one can get, and uh, we need to go in there with the mindset that we're going to resolve this for the sake of our county, and we're going to do it what's best for every citizen that lives here. Uh, it, it's a matter of attitude, and uh, if if we go in there all ma- you know dogmatic that this is the way it's going to be and it cannot be any other way, well then you've already boxed yourself in. Uh, I, to me, I, I appreciate. Uh, those on the county side, I do. I appreciate uh, what, but I think that we've got to come to this thing and put aside selfish motives and what's you know, and do what's best for everybody. I just don't understand the animal control. I said they met the city first said they're going to wait to the end of the year before they pulled out the contract, but now November 11th is the date the county doesn't have an answer. So Ralph Hickok said it best: the fact that they didn't make a plan means they made a decision that come November 11th until they get a plan outside the city limits suggested there will be no animal control. And so know, what, is- why is that such a – why can't the two sides get together? To me, it seems like a no-brainer. city says it's the cost. Why can't the county say we'll help with the cost? We'll provide another person to help out. It right. doesn't seem like that big of an issue, but it seems to yeah. be this contentious issue between the city and the county – and the, the sure. people they're suffering are the people in the cities of Odom and Scriven, and I can't and outside the limits of Jessup because there's right. no there's going to be no animal control come November 11th. Sure, and that's sad to think about uh, because there again, uh, and, and you know, the city I think has um, in the past uh, extended services into the county uh, that uh, you know uh, have I I think uh, benefited. Uh, the whole county, but it's something that the city of Jessup was doing. And uh, both sides have to be appreciative of what the other one is doing. And there's sometimes when you just have to be willing to say, okay, uh, we're willing to compromise in this area. I, I, I hope that, uh, you know, those on that side who have not yet determined that uh, we need to do that, they, they'll do it. I mean, it's just making up our mind we've got to do what's right and, and, and do it. It's just one of those things I just shake my head and I go, doesn't seem like that big of an issue. It seems like an easy solution, These but made more for some reason, really the county, are. explain to me, you're on the city council. Why can't the city and the county come to the table? You know, remember the event the Heaven's Scriven, the big kumbaya, everybody, oh, this is the greatest thing in the world. Going to mm-hmm. do this every quarter. It's been three years since we had another one. Where, yeah. where, why? I mean, like you said, we all well, live in I Wayne think, County. We're all Wayne County citizens. Yeah. We all want what's best for Wayne County. Well, but we, we look and we sit back and we see our city and county government can't even get together and agree on a simple issue like animal control. Yeah. and I, I mean, that's again, just mind-boggling to me. Sometimes it's power struggle, Bob. It's uh, who's in control. Who, who, you know, this is what I've always done. This is what I always still think I ought to be able to do. It, there's these power struggles that exist and then – uh, you know, personal uh, sometimes issues get in our way. Uh, though, uh, they're, they'll never, hopefully when those issues can be set aside is when we can finally come to an agreement we can all be satisfied with. But we have to get to a point, I believe, that it's not about me. It's about everybody else. And uh, that that's key. Uh, and I don't think we're there yet, but when we get there, I think these issues will start being resolved in a whole lot easier way than what they have been in the past. Unfortunately, there's been this animosity that's developed, and and uh, th- that's sad. I we're we're not going to do what's best for this county until we all learn how to uh, cooperate respectfully with each other and do what's best for everybody this year. And we've got a text question, which we're talking about here on, on this issue. Uh, actually, the question is asking uh, your opinion on a unified government for the entire county. That would be consolidation, basically. Yeah, and that's been an issue, too, that's been on the table for years. I, you know, there's some of that that's already happened uh, in the past, and, and it's, it's certain areas where it may work out well. There's other areas where, you know, there, there would be a lot of things that would have to be uh, – thought about uh, that's one of those issues again where uh, you, you have to come to that table of, of uh, resolution 
and uh, reconciliation. And and uh, uh, you know what is it? What's the better good here? I mean, can we do this in in pieces? Can does it have to be done all together? Uh, you know what? It's just a study that I think that uh, we'll have to really put our minds to to see. Because if you did go for a unified, consolidated government, all county and the three cities would all have to have a majority vote. If one of those did not vote for it, then it fails. Yeah. They've, tried, they've tried that in Glynn County numerous times, and Brunswick has shot it down every time where the county is overwhelmingly yeah. for it. And that's, just, that's one of the issues with absolutely. unifying the governments as opposed to just the services. Yes, absolutely. And that, those, again, are some of the issues that exist when you when you talk about unifying uh, governmental bodies like that. And, and uh, uh, you know, uh, this this continues to be sort of the issue is uh, when you do it, who's going to control it? I mean, uh, who's going to police it? Who's, uh, and so there are a lot of things that you, that you encounter through this, but uh, it's doing what's best. I'll get you out of here on a positive note. Just had the Arch Fest. Unfortunately, the weather hampered it a little bit, but your thoughts on the Arch Fest? Pretty good crowd downtown. Yeah, beautiful setting every year. Unfortunately, it was, it was you know, the, well, I can't say unfortunately, I'm, the rain was something we needed, uh, and and we're prepared that prepared to know that uh, the elements and the, uh, the season can affect that. But uh, I certainly appreciate uh, uh, Molly O'Hare and all the DDA and everyone else who City of Jessup, but, uh, County, and people who put this together. It's, it, it's a, a picture of our city, the Arch Fest. It's who we are, and uh, uh, so even though the rain came and dampened it. Uh, it was still, uh, to me, I thought we had a successful day. Okay, though. One more time, talk about the event Saturday. Okay, yes, somebody's thank just tuning in. Tell them, Caleb. Uh, we got our memorial service coming up this weekend, Saturday, November 2nd, uh, at 2 o'clock. Um, then after that, we'll be ready for the Georgia Florida game. <laughs> Sounds <laughs> good. Well, we appreciate you coming in. And again, uh, we'll look forward to the event on Saturday. Thank you. We'll thank be you back Bob. with more of the Butch and Bob show after this. Murphy's Builder Supply is where you need to go for all your home improvement projects and hardware needs. They've been serving folks in this area since 1946. Murphy's offers some products and services that you may not know about. They now sell ammunition, both bullets and shells. Murphy's also sells personalized tags for dog collars. They build customized screens for windows and doors. Murphy's can re-key locks, and of course they can make keys. They cut glass for windows, plus Murphy's has monthly door buster specials. Check their Facebook page to see what's on sale. Murphy's Builder Supply, 156 Northeast Broadway. Street, Jessup. For the best car wash at the best price, then go to the new Nips Car Wash located at 459 Highway 301 South down from McDonald's in Jessup. Nips Car Wash features state-of-the-art IQ automatic car wash system. Every car or truck that enters the automatic IQ wash system is scanned to capture its unique vehicle profile to give you a great car wash every time. Nips Car Wash also features two self-service bays where you can choose from a variety of accessories such as foam brush, tire brush, bug off, wax, clear coat, and spot-free rinse with powerful blowers located in each bay to top off your car wash experience at an affordable price. For the best quality car wash around, go to the new Nips Car Wash located down from McDonald's on the left on Highway 301 South in Jessup. That's Nips Car Wash with a state-of-the-art IQ automatic wash system on Highway 301 South down from McDonald's in Jessup. 8.20 on this Wednesday morning, 30th day of October, and uh, Game 7 tonight. Game 7 tonight. Unfortunately, we had some other guests. The veterans people were supposed to be here last Wednesday and this Wednesday, but they failed to show both times. So hopefully they come next Wednesday and tell us all about the big parade. Yeah. Except for Veterans Day. But, again, we had them on the Butch and Bob show last Wednesday. Didn't show. This Wednesday didn't show. They're supposed to be here for Wednesday, but don't know where they're at. So. Speaking of parade, tomorrow, downtown Jessup. Halloween the Halloween parade. parade, yep. 5 o'clock. Line up at 4.30. John will be dressed up as what are you dressing up as? I don't have to. I don't have to wear a costume. I'm scary enough as it is. It was funny this past Saturday. You know, Sam Darnold played the Patriots and got uh-huh. drilled. And he said after the game that he saw a ghost on the field. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that, everybody yeah. in the stands was dressed up as ghost <laughs> Saturday in Jacksonville. <laughs> and Jackson Deville was in a ghost costume when he jumped off the light fixture That's into the stadium. It, it was pretty funny. <laughs> that, that comment will haunt him for the rest of his life. I see what you did there. 
That ghost comment will oh, haunt him. Oh. <laughs> Don't quit the day job. Yeah, the Halloween parade tomorrow, and you get they a line up at, They line up at, at four thirty behind the. Uh, it's the Jessup Insurance Building. It used to be the old Bank of America building in downtown Jessup. It used to be American National Bank long before yeah, that. Right, Any B. Any B. Yeah, that's the first teller or the first ATM card here in, in, in here Jessup. in County. Yes, it was. That's yeah. right. I remember Patty Bryant dressed up as Annie B. <laughs> we did TV commercials back then. That's a story in itself, but that's well, another chapter that's in the book. It. Yeah, I've heard some of the stories you've told about that. Yeah. They're, they're they're just as crazy as radio stories. Well, it was. I just can't tell. I don't want to. That was that's a, that's, <laughs> that's, that's a wild story. <laughs> Yeah, I think we're thinking about the same one. <laughs> That's a twenty nine ninety five webcam moment right there. When you, when you when you when you join the subscription, there you, you can get all these. That's a wild story. Yeah, uh, I've had stuff like that happen before too. So, and, oh boy! All right, at eight twenty two, anything going on that we need to know about for this weekend for our meetings coming up uh, Thursday or what have you? Like I said, I want to remind people the big buck contest has ended, but they've got the big banquet this Friday night at the farmers market. So again, if you've been involved in that big buck contest, they remind you that that banquet is going to take place Friday at the farmers market. They're going to announce the winner of the big buck contest, hand out the five thousand dollar check, some other awards handed out as well. So that's taking place Friday. I think it's six thirty. Let me get the official time of the banquet. It is six thirty at the farmers market. If you need more information, call the tourism board office today at four two seven three two three three. But again, it ran from October nineteenth to the twenty seventh. Hunters could hunt in Wayne, Long, Glen, Brantley, Pierce, Appling, and Tattano counties. First prize guaranteed five thousand dollars. They've got a lot of gun raffles and other raffles at the banquet. Everyone's invited, so and if you want a ticket for that, contact the Tourism Board office at 427-3233. Also, I want to remind everybody this Saturday at J.C. Stadium, the high school band hosting that Deep South Classic Marching Invitational. They stayed over more than 15 bands from all around yeah. the area will be in time competing. The high school band competes as well. Also performed with the Valdez State University Band. The cost is $10 for adults, $5 for students, ages 4 and under will be admitted free. So everyone's invited to come out Saturday to watch all the bands compete at J.C. Stadium. And, again, the news you don't want to hear, daylight saving time ends Sunday uh, at 2 a.m. So be sure to turn your clocks back one hour before going to bed. And there's some other events besides the Halloween mm-hmm. parade tomorrow. The House of Worship sponsoring an event entitled Toy Story Carnival, Thursday from 6 to 8. Everyone's welcome. Fun time for everyone. Fun food and games. That's taking place at House of Worship tomorrow between 6 and 8. And Calvary Baptist Church this Saturday has their third annual Family Fun Fest. Always a fun event. 1 to 5. They've got activities for all ages, games, food, and fun. That takes place at Calvary Baptist Church this coming Saturday from 1 to 5 p.m. So a lot going on this weekend. Georgia-Florida game. People already traveling through. Excitement building for the big clash in the SEC East. Winner has the upper hand. Also a reminder, tomorrow night, big game in college football at Georgia Southern at Appalachian State, ranked 20th in the country. Yeah, yeah. And uh, we had a question earlier about, uh, just go over again why we're not playing on Friday. Because both coaches decided not to play the game. Well, yeah, that's the That's how that's that's how that's decided. I mean, it's a non-region game. The the, non-region game. Yeah, both, both, both teams, schools yeah. have a region championship title hopes on the line. The following week, neither team decided it was worth playing a non-region game and get possibly somebody getting hurt. Yeah, yeah. So that's why we're not playing it. Oh, okay. Well, I think it's a wise move. Yeah, yeah, I think so. I agree with that. But somebody had wanted to know why earlier why we weren't playing. What? <laughs> well, that's going back a ways. <laughs> uh, I mean, it, you know, we were we were talking about this off air earlier yesterday, actually. That you know, why do they when, care? Why the bottom line is it's not being played. Right, right. But I'm just saying that you know, if you're going to play, if you played that game when it was scheduled, no no issues right. there because it was a preparation game for the region there, schedule. Right. There's it, a region where you have a non-region schedule yeah. and a region yeah. schedule. Non-region games are before the region schedule. Region games are get ready important. for the region right. games. And at this point, it, it makes we're no in difference. Region play. Yeah. So yeah. we're going to stick to the region play yeah. and play the Gators for the region championship. 
a week from Friday. And we are in Wake Forest for that. Yeah, get your popcorn ready. Be a great game. You're going to be in the swamp, correct? Yes, in the swamp. But Wayne will win their third region championship. The trifecta T-shirts are being printed as we speak. <laughs> I wish I could be. I just not. I don't have that level of certainty about everything that you do, Bob. Got to believe, John. Oh, I got to believe. Got to believe. Anything else we need to cover this morning? I think we covered it. Have a great day. Have a great day, Bob. World famous Butch and Bob show on WIFO brought to you this morning by Murphy Builder Supply and Nips Car Wash at eight twenty seven. Right now, let's get a quick update from Fox News Radio. Good morning from the Big Dog. They're next. I'm Dave Anthony, Fox News. Two State Department officials who are special advisors on Ukraine will be questioned at the House the day after a National Security Council staffer raised his concerns about the Trump-Ukraine call. Fox's John Decker is live at the White House. Devin Nunes, the top Republican on the Intelligence Committee, complaining that House Democrats prevented Republicans from pursuing a line of questioning that Democrats say was aimed at outing the whistleblower. They've been bad at most of these depositions, but to interrupt us continually to coach the witness. According to multiple media reports, Lieutenant Colonel Alex Alexander Vimman, the National Security Council official in charge of Ukraine policy, told House impeachment lawmakers yesterday that the White House summary of President Trump's July call to Ukraine's president was incomplete. Dave? And down the White House is calling the process a scam, illegitimate from the start, as the House sets a vote tomorrow to move impeachment forward. Congressman Akeem Jeffries. This is about the fact that the president betrayed his oath of office and the American people. Real horror. At a costume party two nights before Halloween in Long Beach, California, somebody started shooting. Three people were killed, nine injured. Upon arrival, the engine company and the arriving paramedic unit identified a scene uh, obviously full of chaos. Fire spokesman Jake Heflin talking to the LA Times. It's not clear if the gunman is in custody this morning. It's expected to be windy again in California for wild firefighters. The one in Sonoma County has burned down 86 homes, scorching 76,000 acres. Twelve homes have been destroyed by the flames in L.A. Mayor Eric Garcetti. This was uh, simply put in plain parlance an act of God. That the wind broke off a tree branch uh, through that tree branch because of these strong winds far enough to cause a spark off a line. And that's why more than a million people have had their power cut to prevent more fires from being sparked like that. A snowstorm in Colorado's closed schools in Denver canceled hundreds of flights yesterday. And there's record cold temperatures below zero. America's listening to Fox News. I'm Dr. Jeff Gooden, and I treat pain with Salon Pass. That's because practicing good medicine is my responsibility as a doctor. For back or joint pain, I agree with CDC guidance that recommends using topical pain relievers first, like Salon Pass Patch Large. Salon Pass is powerful, FDA-approved to relieve debilitating moderate pain, yet non-addictive and gentle on the body. Look for the green Salon Pass box in the pain relief aisle. Salon Pass. It's good medicine. When it comes to keeping your small business's valuable information safe, Dell Small Business Technology Advisors can recommend tailored security solutions like servers, storage, networking. Plus, right now, get up to 45% off select business computers with Intel Core processors. Running your own small business is a big challenge, but with the right partner, it's a lot easier. To speak with an advisor today, call 877-BY-DELL. That's 877-BY-DELL. The case being made against President Trump in the House is related to his July Ukraine call, but Democrats are still trying to get more material from the Mueller investigation. Last week, a judge ruled that the Democratic-led House Judiciary Committee can have access to grand jury information that had been redacted from special counsel Robert Mueller's Russia election meddling probe. But Tuesday, an appeals court issued a stay to block the release of that material. The three-judge panel putting it on hold pending an appeal by the Justice Department. Democrats want that material as part of the impeachment inquiry against President Trump. DOJ lawyers argue the Democrats already have enough evidence from Mueller's investigation. In Washington, Jill Nato, Fox News. Another court ruling in Pittsburgh lifts restrictions put on guns after a mass shooting. Allegheny County Judge Joseph James cited Pennsylvania state law saying... 